What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Tech once again, and the question is proof of stake versus proof of work. Let's talk about what they each do and the differences between them and the pros and cons right now. Welcome back. So this channel is primarily a mining channel and that pretty much negates any factors of proof of stake for the most part. There is a misconception about masternodes that need to be cleared up as well. Masternodes are not proof of stake. Masternodes essentially enable features on the blockchain such as private send and quick send by locking up a certain amount of coins that the network can then use to process these features. As opposed to proof of stake, which is a validation of the transactions across the entire network based on the amount of coins you've put up to stake. So as opposed to mining where you provide computational power to the network to then validate a transaction and receive a block reward. With proof of stake, what you do is basically buy as many coins as you can afford, and then you lock them up and present them in a staking manner to then validate the transactions in hopes for a reward. To get paid or to increase, of course, the chances of finding a block with your staking coins, what you do is you try to buy as many as possible. Now the argument here, or the argument against it here is that on low level or low use currencies, the problem that you're gonna have is the 51% issue. So if a hacker wanted to execute an attack on the network or on that currency itself, he would then buy 51% of the coins. And if the cost of those coins are low enough at that point, he could pretty much tank that network or execute an attack on it. However, that also means that he is then at that point invested into that coin itself and he will have to take a financial loss as well, which is what people pretty much argue between with that 51% rule, as opposed to with proof of work, in which case all you would have to do is donate 51% of the network hash power to then execute an attack on it. And then you could pretty much move on to mining something else and make your money on a different coin. So those are kind of the big security issues or security thoughts. And of course, if you have more detail, let me know in the comment section below because that's a good topic to bring up. Other than that, one of the big flaws for proof of stake is that it encourages people to not spend the currency, but to hodl the currency. Because as somebody invested in cryptocurrency, you quite commonly hear hold, hodl, and to pretty much keep all the currency to yourself and not sell it in hopes that it goes up in price as an investment and then you can make some profit off of it. The problem is in a proof of stake coin, you are encouraged even more to hold the coins. And while this is good uh, from an investment standpoint, this is bad from the currency standpoint because you're not having the currency in circulation. That being said, proof of stake requires a lot less power because you are not using near as much computational power to process the transactions. And this is where proof of work is having a, its biggest and largest issue in my humble opinion, and that is power consumption. Whether that's buying up all the GPUs or sucking all of the power from a coal plant and destroying our environment, there are valid arguments against proof of work because of this problem. And that's also gonna put a negative light on it in the public, which then puts a negative light on cryptocurrency in general. So really proof of stake is here to solve a couple problems. One is going to be the 51% attack led by miners if they control 51% of the mining power on the network, which has been a big problem when we talk about Bitmain being the only ASICs miner for Bitcoin at this point. The other issue that proof of stake aims to solve is the power consumption problem. And because you are no longer using computational power to validate transactions and generate currency, you no longer have to worry about the power consumption to near the extent you would for proof of work. This is a very basic overview and I hope that it makes some sense to you guys. There are a lot of other arguments that go back and forth between the two and both have their issues that need to be solved. While I would like to say that there's some sort of hybrid system that you could put into place between mining and staking, I'm not quite sure what that would be and I would have to do a lot more studying before I could give you guys some sort of information on that. Where I've been leaning towards lately are coins that use a form of not only masternodes, but also of mining, because this will reduce strain on the network for enabling 
certain features like private send, etc. And then hopefully encourage people to hold their coins a little bit longer while still putting them in circulation by generating new coins with mining but it still doesn't solve the power problem so i'm at a loss here and i would like to hear from you guys what your thoughts are on proof of stake and proof of work and where you think we're headed to in the future i do feel like no matter what happens power has to be solved and that when we figure out some of the issues with staking in general especially just the fact uh, that it does kind of go against decentralization because it's all based on whoever owns the most, which is kind of what cryptocurrency was trying to defeat in the first place. It does seem to be the only thing that solves the power issue and it does defeat attacks with 51% because even if you do have the central control of 51% of the coin, you're probably so heavily invested in that particular coin that you're not really going to want to do anything malicious towards it. So there you go. There's my two cents on that. And I, <laughs> my two cents. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next Tuesday.